Time to fill nitrox. You wanna see how easy it is? What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba Marina. I'm back here in our compressor room and it's a very cold day today so it's a great day to actually fill tanks because whenever you fill tanks you want to keep the tanks as cool as possible so that you get a more accurate fill or, or a more complete fill if you will. A lot of times when you fill up cylinders, especially steel cylinders, what will happen is, is that tank will get overheated and then by the time the tank cools off, thanks to Charles's law, you actually start to lose a little pressure and you actually have to come back and top those tanks off after the fact. Well today what I'm going to be doing is filling some nitrox cylinders and I'm going to show you exactly how continuous blending, what some people would consider a nitrox stick, I'm going to show you how the continuing, continuous blending system actually works. And since it's a good cool day today, we should have a good accurate feel to be able to pressurize these tanks to their maximum pressure and not actually lose any pressure over time when they actually cool off because hopefully these tanks will actually stay cool. But let's jump into it today and I'll walk you through the process of how continuous blending actually works. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that the cylinder is capable of taking nitrox and there's several things that we look for. One, it's not so much the big bulky nitrox uh, sticker on the side. That's not what we really look for to see if we can put enriched air in here. We're going to look more at the inspection sticker itself and see if it's rated, say, for plain air or, say, up to 40% or even up to, say, 100%. Now, that's important to us because if it's rated only up to, say, 40%, then I can't really use partial pressure blending as a way to put enriched air gas in here. But if it is rated up to 100%, then it's very simple to put pure O2 in and then mix air on top of it. Since we're going to be using a continuous blend method through the nitrox stick, then it doesn't really matter if it's rated up to 100%. This one right here is actually rated up to 40%, so it's going to be fine for us. So now that I've tested the inspection, I just want to make sure that it's within hydro. And of course, this one was July of 2017, so it's good on hydro there as well. I noticed that this is going to be a den fill versus a yoke fill, so I'm going to have to use a yoke adapter for it, which is not a big deal for our compressor. Now, once I get this cylinder set up, I'm going to actually walk you through the process of how we use the, the nitrox stick itself to actually blend nitrox. All right, guys, I'm going to give you a quick run through of exactly what a nitrox stick is or how continuous blending works. In short, basically, you are filling nitrox or you're mixing nitrox inside of a stick versus mixing it inside the cylinder as well. And this is going to be a little bit safer than partial pressure blending. Plus, you're going to be able to control that mixture at all times. So if I need to change the mixture really quick, I can simply adjust how much O2 is going into the system and I can change the mixture, say mid blend versus having to stop, recalculate the O2. And you don't use quite as much O2 doing it this method versus continuous blending. So in short, what a stick does inside this PVC pipe is either baffles or in our case, we actually use wiffle balls. They work the same way. Um, in short, the top of the stick is going to be the intake for the compressor. So over here, I have an intake. This is where the air comes in from the atmosphere, gets compressed, gets dried, gets cleaned, and it goes through the, the compressor unit and it goes into the cylinder. Well, all I've done is transferred the intake to the top of the stick. And as we come down, you'll notice that there is an O2 intake or an O2 uh, hose that goes all the way over to our oxygen system. And, <clears throat> excuse me, as I turn on the compressor, the oxygen is going to fill into the stick and mix directly into the system itself. And I've got adjustments here that I can really fine tune how much oxygen is actually going into the stick itself. And then as it mixes inside the, the stick itself, it's going to come down here to a sensor. Here's my little oxygen sensor. It's going to come up to this system here, and basically this is nothing more than um, just an oxygen analyzer. And all it does is it's going to analyze 
<clears throat> how much oxygen is mixed within the stick itself. And with this particular one, we're gonna calibrate it to 20.9 to match the atmospheric oxygen here. So as it mix mixes in the system, it's gonna come all the way down here. It's going to read or calibrate how much oxygen's in it or analyze if you will. And then it's gonna go out into the compressor. And then the compressor itself is gonna put it into the tank itself. So I'm gonna set the camera up real quick. I'm gonna walk you through this process. I'm gonna fill the system and then I'm gonna show you what we do at the end of the fill process to make sure we properly label the tank as well. All right guys, this next part is gonna get a little loud and I apologize because our compressor's rather loud. But in short, now that I've got everything set up, I'm gonna turn on the compressor and basically up here at the top of the stick, that's gonna start sucking air in. Of course, the O2 hose is gonna start feeding it in <clears throat> and I can adjust how much O2 is going in by simply watching my analyzer here. So I'm gonna step over here. I'm gonna cut on the compressor. You'll notice that as air comes in, it should be right at that 20.9 or 21%. And of course, I can calibrate it to get it set exactly where it is I want it. And then once it's calibrated, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna cut on the O2. And you'll notice that O2, that partial pressure is gonna start going up. <clears throat> I can come over here and I can actually fine tune the system to get the exact blend that I want. Try to get the camera turned for you here. Now, once I've got it set to the exact blend that I want, it's gonna be locked in there. And then I'm gonna come back over here to the cylinder. I'm gonna open the cylinder up. And it's gonna fill up. Once it gets full, I'll kind of show you how we analyze it and mark the cylinder that it's ready. All right, now that the cylinder's done filling, I'm gonna go ahead and take the fill adapter off. I'm gonna bring it out into the open. I'm gonna show you how we analyze it and mark the cylinder as well. And we'll just do a quick test to make sure that it's completely full. So I'm gonna pop off the fill adapter here. Get it hung up out of the way. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put a gauge tester on it just to verify real quick that uh, it is completely full. This cylinder here is a 3000 PSI cylinder. I usually boost it to about 31, 32, uh, just in case if I do have any um, cooling effect to occur, then I'll still have. This one's perfect at 3100 uh, PSI right now. So that's great. I'm gonna take it right over here and I'm gonna analyze it one final time and I'm gonna mark it as well. And I'll show you exactly how we know where we can go using this cylinder. All right guys, so now that I've got the cylinder filled up, I need to analyze it and mark it and make sure that it's got the right blend for the dive that I'm gonna be making. And I also wanna mark it so that I know how deep I can go using this particular blend. And at any point during the dive, I can actually look at it to verify what the uh, partial pressure of O2 in the cylinder is. To do that, I need another analyzer, and I've got just a little handheld that I'm gonna be using here, but just like our previous analyzer, we need to make sure that we calibrate it to a known gas source. Right now, I know that the atmospheric partial pressure of O2 is around 20.9%, so I'm just gonna simply turn my analyzer on, and I'm gonna analyze it to 20.9%. Once again, that's my known atmospheric partial pressure of O2. So there I've got it set up for 20.9%. I'm gonna stick it to the front of the valve and all you've gotta do is just barely crack that valve to get a little bit of airflow coming through. And what that's gonna do is that analyzer is gonna pick up the partial pressure of the O2 in the cylinder itself. So right now it's going up and I'm at 29.5, 29.6, 29.7. 29 point is settling at 29.9 so we are going to calculate that as 30 percent which happens to be perfect for me because 30 percent is the blend i need for the particular dive that i'm going on 
Now, I do need to mark the cylinder. There's several different ways to do it. A lot of times you'll see the little nitrox stickers, and I'm not talking about the big stickers here. I'm talking about the little analyzation stickers that go around the crown. I don't really like using those. I basically use painter's tape or masking tape, and there's several reasons. One, it's a good wide canvas that I can write on. Number two, it doesn't leave any sticky residue on my cylinder. Um, and especially in the summertime, if we're putting a lot of stickers on our tanks, that sticky residue really becomes annoying. It picks up dirt and everything else. So I like to use either masking tape or painter's tape. And I'm just gonna tear me off a little strip here. Nothing too much, about like that. I'm gonna find me a good clear spot to put it here on the crown. And you wanna make sure that you don't cover up any of the numbers, especially if you're filling this for a customer, not yourself, then you wanna make sure that you don't cover up any of the numbers on the cylinders because those numbers are relatively important and somebody needs to read them. So there's several things that I wanna put on here. I'm gonna actually start with the date itself. So today is the 21st of January, 2020. And I also wanna put my initials because I'm the one that actually filled the, the cylinder. <clears throat> the next thing I want to do is I want to indicate the actual blend that's inside the, the cylinder. Now, I don't really skimp here when I do that. I want that in big, bold numbers. So I'm going to write 30%. And that way there is no mistaking what is actually in the cylinder itself. And then probably the second most important thing is I need to write what the maximum operating depth is for 30%. And this particular one, if we're basing it off of 1.4 partial pressure of O2, then of course my maximum operating depth will be 121 feet, which just happens to be perfect for me because I'm going to be doing some rec dives next week and I need 30% in my side mount system to go down to do those rec dives. So in short, this cylinder has been properly filled, and of course, I've got it properly marked and ready to use. Now, I do have a week to go before uh, my trip, so I'm gonna give these tanks just a day or two to really cool off, just to see if there was any cooling factor going, or, or Charles's law going on here. And if it is, of course, I can top it back off. But guys, that's pretty much how easy it is to continuous blend nitrox out there. Um, we've done a series of videos in the past on partial pressure blending, how to calculate uh, the proper O2 partial pressure, and we also did a series on nitrox itself on how to calculate what your maximum operating depth is, how the magic circle works. I'll link all those videos down in the description, and some of them may pop up here as well. Definitely go watch them, because they're going to be great for you, especially, say, if you're getting into technical diving, maybe if you're getting into the professional side of diving, and, this, and say, gas blending is a class that you're interested in teaching. Go watch those videos, because it's going to be a lot of great information for you as well. And those are some of our top watch videos. They're, they're highly talked about. Go through, read some of the comments, uh, because I think you can definitely learn from them videos as well. But guys, that's it for continuous blending. That's how simple it is. You see the process that we go through to do it. If you've got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer it the best I can. I really appreciate you watching our videos, guys. It means the world to us. As you, every time you watch our videos, you comment, you subscribe, you share. It supports us more than you can ever imagine, and we thoroughly appreciate each and every one of you. But guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.